Thank you for subscribing to Trestle. Now it's time to configure the system so that technology providers or brokers can make connections with your organization. A key step you must complete before connections are possible is to configure data feeds, and that's what we'll cover in today's video. Let's get started. To begin, I logged on to Trestle and clicked on the top level menu option entitled Data. This opens the Data Feed Manager. The Data Feed Manager displays all the data feeds available for you to configure, along with some basic information that defines each of those data feeds. The available data feeds during the initial release of Trestle support IDX feeds via both RETS and Web API, as well as data feeds supporting IDX Plus via RETS and Web API delivery. Incidentally, IDX feeds are limited to active listings, while IDX Plus includes active and sold listings. If you look over to the right side of the page, you'll also see that these data feeds are disabled. You must configure and enable those data feeds when you're ready to use them. You will also see that the list shows data feeds for RESO, one for the Data Dictionary certification, and one for the Web API certification. Unlike other data feeds, they are enabled by default. However, if you do not wish to pursue RESO certification, you are welcome to disable those data feeds. Although we have to configure each data feed separately, the Data Feed Manager gives us lots of control. To illustrate how this works, let's configure the IDX data feed provided via Web API by clicking the Edit button on the corresponding row. As you can see, there are four areas to configure for this individual data feed. Details, Fees, Contracts, and Data. Let's start with details. To enable the data feed, let's click Yes. For broker participation, let's leave the entry as Required. In fact, Trestle doesn't support data feeds for which brokers opt in to include their listings, but we will be supporting that in an upcoming release. The next entry covers broker authorization, often known as three-way data licensing agreements. When a multiple listing organization configures a data feed to require broker authorization, Trestle will automatically withhold data delivery to a technology provider until one or more brokers have provided such authorization through the system. We'll provide more information and a video on broker participation when that feature is enabled. However, since Trestle does not support broker authorization just yet, let's leave the entry as not required. Now let's save. Next, let's click on the Fees tab to further configure the data feed. First, let's select how often we wish to charge parties licensing this data feed. Our choices are monthly, quarterly, and annually. We'll select quarterly. Next, let's enter an amount for liquidated damages that will automatically be inserted into data license agreements prepared by Trestle on your behalf. Liquidated damages is the compensation amount that would be awarded to you if the data license agreement was breached. You can simply enter zero dollars if you do not wish to establish an amount for liquidated damages. But in this illustration, let's set the amount to 5,000. Next, let's select the notice period which we used to use. All Trestle data feeds are governed under self-renewing one-year licenses. The notice period establishes how many days before an annual renewal one must provide notice to terminate. Options are 30 to 180 days in 30-day increments. We'll select 60 days. Incidentally, Trestle will provide us with alerts prior to each renewal so that we don't inadvertently miss a renewal date. Next, please enter the setup fee, if any, that you wish to collect to enable the data feed. Let's set this amount to $125. Lastly, let's enter the periodic fee associated with the data feed. We'll enter 125 again. Now that we've entered all this information, what does it all mean? Well, for one, it means that technology providers exploring a prospective connection with your multiple listing organization will see fees posted here. Second, it means that these fees will automatically be included in any data license that Trestle generates for a technology provider who wishes to obtain your IDX data via Web API. Lastly, it means that Trestle will process charges in these amounts on your behalf when we commence full e-commerce operations in a couple of months. In the interim, 
all charges will be logged and e-commerce charges will be deferred. But when that release is complete, we'll process all the deferred fees and deposit them directly into your deposit account. Let's save this. Next, let's click on the tab to contracts. In order to establish connections to distribute your data, you must select a contract. As you can see here, the only contract available to select is the default data feed contract prepared by CoreLogic for Trestle subscribers. I'm going to select that contract and click Save before we discuss contracts a little bit more. Save captured all the changes we made to the IDX feed via Web API. It saved the details I selected, the fees I entered, and my contract choice. But you're probably asking yourself if you can review the default data licensing contract. The answer is yes. Simply click on Support and open help for multiple listing organizations. The Trestle Guide for MLS Managers contains a copy of the default data licensing contract, along with detailed information about replacing the default agreement with one you prefer to use. We strongly encourage you to review that very important information. Then contact the Trestle support team if you need additional help. With the work we've just done, you're ready to make connections today and to distribute your listing content via Trestle. There's one more optional step to configure your data feed, and we'll cover this in a future video. Thanks for joining.